Hey there, Kingdom Builders, Kingdom Nation. It's your girl, Danny Royal from DannyRoyal.com, and I am back with another video. So I've been um, just in Daniel, and um, I just felt led to go there. And I was having a conversation with um, someone the other day, and I was saying how pride comes before mighty fall. Now, there is a scripture that talks about pride coming before a mighty fall. But I want to, before I dive into pride uh, coming before a mighty fall, I also had a conversation with them about um, about how at the end, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Like, I mean, every, every, everybody. Everything, everybody, every entity, everything under the heaven, over the heaven is going to bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's a real thing. And I believe that God gives you things and drops things in your spirit and puts things, you know, in you so that you can go deeper sometimes and so that you can look further into um, things, although I know these things, but sometimes God wants to, you know, give you a little extra umph, you know, just so that you can know he can just validate that everything that you're saying is true. Although he himself needs no validation. Now I know, you know, not the word in and out. Cause I don't know. I'm not a Bible scholar, scholar, but you know, I read enough or I have read enough to know that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and he rose, and that humility is everything. Um, so without further ado, I would like to present to you guys King Nebuchadnezzar. Maybe I'm saying that wrong, but go with me, okay? These names in the Bible sometimes can catch you up, and I need to, you know, bring it to the new age, new modern day, you know, vocabulary, because I, I look... The Bible sometimes be having me in a tizzy. Um, and it's only the Holy Spirit that, you know, gives me understanding to the capacity in which I have it. <coughs> Excuse me. But I want to shed light on Daniel chapter four. And maybe actually before that. Maybe actually before that. Now, all of the book of Daniel is prophetic. Let me tell you. So when you have the opportunity to read all of Daniel, so King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, um, God had to humble him. Let me tell you, he was the king over Babylon. Now, Babylon today is America. We live in a new age Babylon, okay, where confusion, confusion is upon us by the mixing of everything that's not new under the sun, okay? And let me tell you how the people in high places are coming down. Those people that try to play God and try to get you to worship and serve other gods and all these things. Now, you're going to have to hold an account for yourself, but... Follow me. They're going to ha have to hold an account for themselves because, again, at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So, King, back to King ne Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. Um, he he was a dreamer, though he had dreams. Um, of, of different things and he would go out to like the sorcerers and all these people to interpret the dreams and ask me how I know um, let me see let me see there is a scripture in here where well Nebuchadnezzar dreams a couple of times in, in this specific cha uh, chapter He, he dreams in chapter 2. He dreams in chapter 6. 
He dreams in chapter 8. And so forth. So he dreams a couple of times. Okay. And so he would go to the soothsayers and the sorcerers and all of the people of that day to gain and seek wisdom and knowledge and understanding um, for what these dreams meant. But let me tell you, this is for somebody that you cannot go outside of God to get a godly interpretation of something that God has given to you. Let me say it one more time. You cannot go outside of God to get a godly interpretation of what God has given to you. Only the Holy Spirit is a revealer of the truth. Okay? That's for somebody. And so Nebuch King Nebuchadnezzar was going. So yes, this was before Jesus Christ died on the cross. So the angel of the Lord would come upon um, him to give him the interpretation of the dream. Or um, the, the angel Gabriel, which is the messenger able angel would come down to interpretate what has been seen um, in the spirit realm. And even in chapter two um, um, of Daniel in verse 27, it says, um, and the king called him Belshazzar, Belshazzar, Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. look, catch it however you choose. Okay, so it's in 26, it says, The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen? Right? And the interpretation thereof. And Daniel said, And Daniel answered in the, in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men uh, or the astrologers or the magicians or the soothsayers show unto thee. They just can't do it. Okay. But there is a God in the heaven that reveal of secrets and make it known to the King Nebuchadnezzar. What shall be in the later days, thy dreams and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. And so he goes into telling him the interpretation of the first dream that he has but he has another dream and that's the that's what i want to to uh talk about i want to talk about that because he was also affiliated with the the um fiery and the three hebrew boys i can go for miles so king nebuchadnezzar had a whole lot going on and he was like yeah look y'all gonna serve Y'all going to serve this God, this golden calf, this golden God that I built. And everybody has to serve this God, you know, and God sure know how to do a thing. So God gave him another dream. And he again, he went to the soothsayers, the musicians and all these things to interpret the dream. And God was like, you know, but then he remembered a man named Daniel. And so they went to go get him and Daniel interpreted the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had. Right. And what I want to hone on in on is seven years of illness, seven years of illness. King Nebuchadnezzar had to go through like literally it was deep y'all. And I kind of want to touch on it just a little bit. I want to read chapter four, 23. And it says, and whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, who? the tree down and destroy it Le yet leave the stump and the roots thereof in the earth even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him seven times y'all that's seven years long time He's going to be ill for seven years. And let me jump. This is the interpretation. O king, this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the king, that ye shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling, and thy dwelling shall be. 
Hold on. And thou dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. He shall live amongst the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over seven years. So thou know the, that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And and give it to him and give it to whom so ever he will. Twenty six. And whereas the command they commanded to leave the stump of the tree of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Okay. Um, and then I want to jump to still in chapter four to verse thirty one. Hold on. And it says, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. Okay. Saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. So God allowed the kingdom to depart from, from thee because of who he was, how he lived and the way that he did things. He wanted to do things his way. He wanted to rule, you know, it was already confusion going on in Babylon and not to mention he wanted them to worship, you know, this false God and all these other things. And it was so much going on. Hence the soothsayers, the, the wise men and all these other people. And he's, that looks a lot like today. But he said, what, what got me was the kingdom is departed from thee. Now I told you early on that I was having a conversation with somebody about pride and how pride comes before a mighty fall. Before I, I went to 31, but I want to, I want to, I want to go back a little bit to 28 verse four of Daniel went because the king was, he was boastful and he was, he was in pride and he was boasting in pride. And he said, he said, all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar at the end of the 12 months, he walked in the in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, is not the great Babylon? Is this not the great Babylon? I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power. Who are and for the honor of my majesty. God's like, Spirit, hold on. Wait one second. I'm, I'm about to prove to you something real quick. One time. And boom, the kingdom is departed from thee. Straight like that. And then verse 32, and then it says, And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the, with the beasts of the field. So you're now going from, oh, thy king Nebuchadnezzar, now to have to live with the beasts of the field. Right? And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee until, until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Come on now. That's some humbling there. Let me tell you. And, and, and I'm going to read 33 and it says the same hour was the thing, was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar and he was driven from men and he did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. So his hairs were grown like eagles, like eagles feathers and his nails like birds claws. Come on now. Come on now. Pride comes before a mighty fall. King Nebuchadnezzar was a clear display of having too much arrogance to the point where God had to humble him. I don't know who this is for, but I know that some people in high places are coming down and I've been talking about judgment on an all time high, but let me tell you there, there is no humbling like God humbling. There is no God, no humbling like God humbling you. You think and you thought that you got away with murder over there. 
you think and you thought that you got away with putting your mouth on a child of God or doing something wrong or thinking something something that uh, 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 you did wasn't going to get found, found out. Let me tell you how the Lord sure, sure knows how to. He sure knows how to bring you to your knees. Now, I'm not excluded from the from being brought to my knees, but I'm like, Lord, I surrender. I don't want no smoke. But to those people who think that they're so high and mighty and for to those people who think that they're more high of themselves than they ought to, let me tell you, you are about to come down. OK. And he dealt with this. And I'm like, well, what would cause Nebuchadnezzar? I mean, clearly God would. But well, what was it? There was a name for the condition in which he was in and the state that King Nebuchadnezzar w was in. And this is this this is considered to be what he was in was considered to be a mental illness known known as zone 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 th therapy zone therapy zone th zone atherapy look I'm messing it up but it's spelled like this z o a n t h r o p y in which a man thinks and acts like an animal. It is also called bonotherapy with a B. B O A N T H R O P Y. More specific more specifically, when a man thinks of himself as an ox. This is what God caused to come upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was the king. He was this great guy who did great things and he built Babylon and it was so great until God had to humble him. And I want to go real quick, if you'll go with me. Well, we don't technically have to go there. Mm, do I want to, Lord Holy Spirit? Okay, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to. Because y'all know I like to give y'all word. And I'd like to lead y'all there. I mean, y'all supposed to go there for yourselves. You know, just don't take my word for it. You know, test his word. Take it back to the Lord. And, and go to the scriptures and read them for yourself. Never take anybody's word for it. Now, hold on. Come on now. Proverbs. Okay, Proverbs 16 and 18 is where, where we're trying to go. Where we're going, actually, okay? Come on, Lord. And it says, and this is Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. He was prideful. He had too much arrogance and God was like, hey, huh, let me humble you real quick. You want to be serving these, these gods out here and you want to be acting like, you know, you know it all and all these things because you done did it. God's like, I got you. Just hold on. Hold one second. And then I want you to follow me. Actually, follow me back to Daniel because King Nebuchadnezzar, after he had gone through his prideful moment, I mean, his not prideful moment, his humbling moment. Due to pride and arrogance. I'm not going to read all of 34 through 37. But I am going to read 37. Because Nebuchadnezzar then praises God. Okay. And it says now I Nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. All whose works are truth. And his ways judgment. Come on now. And those walk and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Come on. Let me tell you. You don't want no smoke with the most high. You don't want no smoke with this with the most high. Okay, so turn with me to Philippians 2, 10 and 11. And it reads that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven and things in the earth 
and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. They're going to confess it to the glory of God the Father that Jesus Christ is Lord, even you, even me. So you cannot believe all you want to. What want to you? For those who don't know Christ, I would like to invite you to get to know him and understand that if you got pride up here and maybe this video offends you, check your heart. Allow God in. I ask that God gives you a heart of flesh and he removes that heart of stone because something somewhere went wrong. But guess what? God didn't do it. But what he can do is fix it. And what he can do is humble you. And one thing you don't want to do is be humbled by God. When I say the Bible says vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I'll repay every man according to, to his works. He means just that. You don't want to you, you, you don't want that kind of smoke. I, you just you just don't. OK, but I love you. So much with the love of God. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for just being here. Share these videos out. Let somebody know that Jesus Christ is real and he reigns and that he's alive and well today. Because let me tell you, the enemy is out here talking his talk. Making his moves because he knows his time is short. But again, at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And God will humble the proud. I love you guys so much. I'm your girl, Danny Royal from DannyRoyal.com and I'll see y'all in the next video. Have a blessed day. Peace.